short guide to how to use teams so as you can see here this is the calendar view when you've opened up teams it's worth downloading onto your phone onto all your devices and it'll look something like this it looks a little bit different this is the desktop version it looks a little bit different on your mobile so if we just look across on the left hand side you've obviously got activity chat so it's all the chat we'll go into these now but the chat is for all the teams that you're involved with, you can see all the different chats. You can see the teams, the different teams that you've been assigned. And for each of your modules, you'll be put into different teams. You can see any upcoming assignments, communities that you might have signed up to within the university. The important one we're gonna look at now is a your calendar and just setting up a meeting. So you might wanna uh, set up a meeting with, you might, for example, have a group presentation and you wanted to meet about that assignment. So I've just set up here a calendar meeting with myself. You don't have to meet with yourself, but this is just obviously to test to show you. So in the top with the pencil there, it's got what the title of your meeting is called. You then would add in people that you want to meet with. If it is with a student or if it's with a member of staff, they will be on the system. As you can see, I've been pulled through here. On here, then obviously you set the time as you would any normal calendar meeting. If it's going to be a repeat meeting, so it might be a dissertation meeting with your supervisor if you're in year three. And obviously, if you wanted to add any notes, then you can do that. So let's send that. So you can see here, you could just do, in the top right hand corner here, you've got meet now. If you knew a friend was online, you could just press meet now and it would do a similar sort of thing. It would patch you right through to them, but they may not answer. Usually the best way is just to schedule a meeting. Okay, so before you go in, you can make sure your air is looking nice and you, know, you haven't got anything dodgy in the background. <laughs> So here, there's just to go through these, you might be entering a lecture, you might be entering a meeting where you'll be asked to turn off your video, which you can do by just touching that. And you can turn off your mic as well by doing that. We're gonna turn these on. So once you're ready, your hair's all done, love, then you can go to join meeting. It'll connect through and then you'll see yourself on the wider screen. So I'm just going to run through what some of these things up here mean. So the first one is show participants. So you can see who's actually in the meeting. Well, within this meeting, it's only me. So you can see that I was the organizer. I'm the person that's in here. If it was a lecture, you could see all the different people down the right hand side there. If it was a meeting, again, you could see who was in the meeting there. Conversation. So again, if it's a lecture, if it's a meeting, the lecturer might be asking you some questions. You can answer and provide feedback here. Now, if you look down the bottom, you've got the format so you can type your message as you would on a Word document. Sometimes you may want to use these if you want it to be an urgent or an important response. Usually standard is the one we choose. You can upload from your computer. So again, your lecturer might be asking you to upload something. This is how you do it with an attachment here. You've also got the emojis. You've got to love an emoji. So that could be, I know for when uh, some of the lectures I've got planned, it could be a quick poll. So I'll be asking whether to show up in a yes or a no. You can obviously use the mighty GIF. You know I love a GIF. So again, that can be there for social messages. And then when you're ready to send, it'll appear to everyone on here. It takes a bit of time to do that. Again, during a lecture, maybe your lecturer is in the middle of a long monologue and they're talking. You don't want to interrupt, so you can raise your hand. Don't forget to lower your hand 
because that can stop the note turn. These three dots are really important. Again, it's worth having a look at these before going into a lecture setting or a meeting setting. You can look at all the different settings you've got here. What is really important is this start recording. So what you could do, you might be doing a group presentation. You could call as we have here and you could record the presentation and send it to your lecturer. Again, there's different background effects that you could apply if you so wanted a bit of Baywatch, as you can see here. And we're on the beach, so it's up to you. Again, throughout the meeting, throughout the lecture, the lecturer might ask you to turn off cameras. So again, just by touching that, your camera will turn off. Or mute is a common one. So your lecturer might ask you to be quiet not be slurping tea or if your cat or dog or whoever is making noise in the background you can mute that there another really really important um icon to love of teams is you can share content so you might be able to you might be asked by your lecturer to share content on your screen you'll do this here and then it will pull through the different tabs that are open and you can share obviously here You've got the leave option, so you can leave the meeting. And if you've called a meeting, you can stop the meeting, you can end the meeting. The difference between those two is you could leave the meeting but still continue. When you end the meeting, everything stops, including the chat. So I'm going to do that for us now. And this is going to be the end of the session. If you need additional support, there's some brilliant support being offered by IT services. Get in touch with them and book on to that. Thank you.